Okay, hi everyone. Okay, let's just uh, review what we learned uh, previously. Okay, we are at unit 7, solving problems in um, length, mass, and uh, liquid. Okay, so let's look at um, uh, this question. She, Mrs. Jim wants to prepare some syrup. She uses 180 gram of sugar in R. So this is R and she uses 480 gram. How much sugar should be dissolved in container S so that both containers have the same concentration of syrup? Okay, so we write it out first. One and a half liters equals 1500 ml. Okay, you remember one liter, half liter is 500 ml because one liter is one liter is a thousand ml. So half a liter sparrow is 500 ml. Okay, so you change your ml, so you write down the equation. 1500 ml will require 180 gram of sugar, like what the question uh, tells us. Now we want to look for this 450 ml. So 450 ml, how much sugar will be uh, required? So method one, we divide 10 on left on both sides. Okay, left side divide 10, right side also divide 10. So when we divide 10, we just cross one zero, right? So this one is 150 ml. This one cross one zero is 18 gram. Then the question asks for 450 ml, we just times 3 to get 450 ml. So since this is an equation, the left side times 3, the right side also times 3. So 18 times 3 is 54 gram. Okay. So for those of you who didn't come to school, let me just review what is happening here. For example, um, let's say one person can eat two slices of pizzas. Okay. Now, how many pizzas can be eaten by four people? Now, very easy, right? Once you know one person eats two slices, four person, you just times two, you get 8 slices. Okay? Now, what if the question goes like this? Um, let's say 3 people can eat 9 slices of pizza. Now, how many pizzas can be eaten by 2 people? So what we do is, we find out how many pizza can one person eat. So 9 slices of pizzas divided by 3 people, we get 3. So one person can eat 3 slices. Then 2 people, you times 3, you get 6 slices. So you find out first how many can one person eat. And then you just multiply what the question is asking. So this is similar to method 2. The question tells us that 1500 ml uses 180 gram of sugar. So we find out 1 ml uses how much su sugar first. So we divide 1500. Okay, divide 1500. Then once you find out 1 ml uses how much sugar, you times what the question is asking. The question asks for 450, so we times 450. So you simplify, cross two zeros. And then this one, you sim divide 15 is 1, divide 15 is 3. And then 18 times 3, you get 50, go 4 gram, which is the same as method 1. Okay, alright, example, let's look at um, another question. 
Okay, this is a pandan cake in the shape of a cuboid. The length is 6 cm, width 4 cm, height is 2 cm, panjang, uh, lebar, tinggi. Now you can see the weight here, berat dia 1.2 kg. Right? The pandan cake is cut into several pieces. Okay, this is the unknown. We need to find out how many pieces. And after you cut it, each piece, that, mean, that means one piece is 200 gram. Okay, so we need to determine the measurement for each piece of cake. So we need to find out how many pieces are cut first. So total is 1.2 kg. Cut how many pieces? That is the unknown. After you cut it, each piece is 200 grams. That's what we know so far. Okay. So to find the unknown here, we take the total mass, divide the mass of one piece. Okay. So 1.2 kilo divided by 200 grams. 1.2 kilo you change to gram first. Look here. 1.2 kilo you times a thousand gram because one kilo is a thousand gram. So 1.2 kilo times a thousand gram you get 1,200 gram. Then we divide 200, cross two zeros, cross two zeros, up and down. Divide two is one, divide two is six. So we find out that uh, the cake is cut into six pieces. Now, how do we find the measurement for each piece of cake? Okay, now there are two ways of cutting the cake. Okay, look here. Okay, the first way of cutting the cake is like this. Right in the middle. And then here and here. Okay, can you see six pieces? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so if we cut this way, then each piece will measure uh, 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, why? Because this whole length is 6 cm. Can you see that? 6 cm. So you divide 3. So each piece is 2 cm in length. And then this is 4. So you divide 2. There are 2 pieces here. You divide 2. Each piece is 2 cm in width. And then the height doesn't change. The height is still 2 cm. So that you cut it the first way, it will be 2 times 2 times 2. That's the measurement. Second way of cutting, okay, let's say I cut it straight like this. One piece, two pieces, three pieces, four pieces, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, if I cut it this way, then each size will be 1 times 4 times 2. Okay, why? Because total uh, length is 6 cm, right? Now you cut into 6 pieces. So you divide 6 is 1. So the length is 1 cm. Now the width doesn't change because we didn't cut here. So it is still 4 cm. The height doesn't change. We didn't cut it. It is still 2 cm. So the second way of cutting will be 1 times 4 times 2. Okay, so it depends on how you cut the cake. Okay, next page. Okay, this is solving problems in mass. Maria's body mass is 68 kg. Uh, that means her weight, not her weight is 68 kg. She is obese. Okay, overweight. Uh, based on her mass, height and age. She tried to reduce her body mass by cycling 3 km, jogging 2.5 km every day for 4 weeks. Then her mass decreased by 5%. Sudah berjaya dikurangkan 5%. Calculate her new mass, berat badan yang baru. So, what is given to us is original weight, original mass 68 kg. And she decreased it by 5%, kurang 5%. So remember, original mass, peratus asal, seratus peratus. 
and then dia kurangkan 5%, 5% has been reduced, so the balance is 95%. Okay, this is her new mass. So we take 95%. Can you see this? Tukar ke pecahan, letak per 100 times the original mass, 68 kg. Okay, so this is 0 0.95 because you move decimal point two times to the left times 68 kg. And then you do the calculation. The weight, the new weight is 64.6 kg. Okay, 64.6 kg. This is this question is similar like you're buying something. Okay, you're buying something. Uh, let's say you're buying. Uh, address okay you're buying a dress 100 ringgit now it has a 5% discount on the price tag so how much is the new price harga baru so 100% harga asal 100% tolak discount so balance dia 95% so you take 95% per 100 darab harga asal Okay, potong 2 kosong and then you get harga baru 95 ringgit. Okay, this question is similar to a uh, discount in money. Okay, question 2. Wan Ina buys a piece of cloth measuring 14 meters in length that costs 210 ringgit. Okay, 14 meters in length that costs 210 ringgit. It is cut into seven pieces of equal length. She uses three pieces to make a tablecloth. What is the length of cloth in meters is used to make the tablecloth? Calculate the cost of the tablecloth. So all these are important information you need to under underline. 14 meters in length. Okay, so this is how long the cloth is. That cost 210 ringgit. So this is important information. It is cut into seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven pieces here. And she uses three pieces. So these three orange ones are used to make a tabletop. So that is three over seven. Why? Because there are seven pieces total and she used 3 only. So 3 over 7 to make a tablecloth. What is the length of cloth in meters used to make the tablecloth? Okay, so we know that the total is 14 meters and she used 3 over 7 to make it. So we take 3 over 7 times 14 meters to find out how much is used for the tablecloth. So divide 7 is 1, divide 7 is uh, 2, 3 times 2 is 6. So the first answer, she used 6 meters to make the table clock. Okay, second question, calculate the cost of the table clock. So um, she, she used 3 over 7 to make a table clock. That's the table clock here, 3 over 7 times the total cost of the cloth. The total cost is 210 ringgit for the whole piece. Then we use 3 over 7 times 210 ringgit to find out the cost of the table cloth. So divide 7 is 1, divide 7 is 30, 3 times 30 is 90 ringgit. Okay, so this Three pieces here cost 90 ringgit. Okay. So the length of the cloth used to make the tablecloth is 6 meters. That's three, uh, 3 over 7 times 14 meters. And the cost is 90 ringgit. That's 3 over 7 times 210 ringgit. Okay, last question before we go to your homework. Okay, three locations on a straight road. Hazik's house, mosque, 
and a shopping complex. Hazik drives from his house to the shopping complex. Okay, so from his house, he drives to the shopping complex that is 15 kilometers. On the way home, he stops at the mosque. So on the way back, he stops here. And he used 2 liters of petrol for this distance travel. If he drives at constant speed, how many liters would be needed for 1 km? Okay, so first we need to find out what is the distance for this. Okay, very easy, right? From Hazik's house to the shopping complex is 15. From his house to the mosque is 5. So 15 minus 5, you get 10 km. So Hazik travel from his house to the shopping complex 15 km. From shopping complex to the mosque 10 km. So together 15 plus 10, you get 25. Right, can you see that? Minus first, you get 10 km and then you plus, you get 25. So total distance is 25 km and he used 2 liters of petrol. Okay, so we write down the equation here. 25 km uh, uses 2 liters of petrol. How much petrol will be needed for 1 km? Like the question asks. Okay, so to find 1 km, you have to divide. Okay, this is the same like what I showed you just now. Three people eat nine slices of pizzas. So one person would eat nine divide three, you get three. Okay, so we take two liters divide 25 km. Okay, then this is decimal point, so you can add point zero zero behind. So there's no remainder. Okay, you divide everything, you get 0 0.08 liters. So he used 0 0.08 liters for the distance of 1 kilometer. Okay. Alright, so your homework for this holiday is page... One hundred and thirty. Okay, one hundred and thirty in your textbook. So I, as I promised, only five questions. Uh, self practice. Okay, A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, so only five questions for this long weekend. So please do your homework, and then we'll discuss your questions when we meet again in school. Okay, that's all for today's video. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.